What's up guys? Welcome to Ride the Bean. It is a beautiful day today, so we thought we'd give you a tour of our home city. That way you'll never recognize it if you ever come here, because the weather is always shitty. <laughs> but we upload a new video every Thursday, so if you want to follow us, hit the like button, subscribe, and click the bell so you'll be notified when we upload new videos. Now we're in the town square. This uh, town square was just reopened after being closed for about a year. So it's uh, newly rebuilt. And uh, that dude on top of the pole there, he is the founder of the city. He founded it in uh, 997. His name is Olav Tryggvason. Uh, he was a Viking king and he died at the battle of uh, Svolder. Well, it was a sea battle uh, back in the year 1000. So this city is over a thousand years old. In uh, 1997 we celebrated our 1000 year anniversary and had the World Ski Cup here. That was fun. Still living on that. Yeah. <laughs> so that statue uh, is 18 meters tall and it was raised in uh, 1921. Pretty cool statue. He is holding a sword and uh, a scepter. And if you look in the back here, you can see the famous Nidaros Cathedral, which we'll show you in a minute. And Mr. Tryggvason is looking down towards the sea, where he entered at the bottom of uh, Nidelva, the Nid River. I don't know what that means. In the year 997, Olaf Tryggvason was um, looking for a place to start a kaupang, uh, a trade center and he decided on this spot after taking his ship up the river. The, the Viking ships were famous for being able to go uh, across the ocean and in shallow water up the rivers. One thing that is cool about this statue is that it doubles as a sundial. If you look at the ground here you can see that uh, the shadow is the arrow hand. Before we move on I think we need some coffee. So let's go to uh, Isaks, which is uh, the place that Adrian, our roaster, also works. They have really good coffee. So this is Nurdre, one of our shopping streets, but we're heading to the library where Isaks is, that way. Now we are in the library. And down here are ruins and some skeletons from uh, a 12th century church that used to be here. It's pretty cool. <laughs> the park that we're walking through right now is a memorial park for the victims of um, the terror attack that happened on July 22nd, 2011, when Anders Bering Breivik killed 80 some kids at an island further south in Norway called Utøya. And that church is called the Church of Our Lady, Vår Frue Kirke. And it's not really used as a normal church anymore. It's more like a home, homeless shelter or where they feed homeless people and people in need. And what I find most fascinating about this church is the graves around it. Some pretty old graves here from the 1600s and 1700s. When I was a kid I used to always come here and look at the graves and imagine who these people were. They lived like 400 years ago. This one uh, from, 17, from 1724 to 1787. It's, uh, it's a while ago. So this is the Nidaros Cathedral, the biggest cathedral in Northern Europe. Nidaros is the historical name for Trondheim. They started building it in 1070 on top of the grave of our patron saint, Saint Olaf. They didn't finish it for 300 years later. And in 1160, Bishop Eystein went to Canterbury and saw their beautiful cathedral and said, ha, huh, I'm gonna have the biggest one. So the west front has a bunch of 
awesome figures of saints. It also has the crucifix and a huge rose window that is beautiful. The cathedral is now a Protestant church but it was built in Catholic ages. This has been a site for pilgrims in the last thousand years and it's also the crowning church of Norway. The crown jewels are kept over there in the Archbishop's Palace where there is an awesome festival every summer celebrating St. Olaf. As you can see is where the crown jewels are stored down in the basement. Usually in uh, summer you can go visit them uh, when the museum is open but I think it is closed at the moment. But over there is uh, the armory museum. That's a pretty cool uh, cool place. They have exhibits of uh, like uniforms, military uniforms from uh, all the way back to Viking ages. But I would definitely recommend a visit there. It's very interesting. Right now the church is over there and if you walk down towards the marina you get to a place called uh, the Olaf's Well which is uh, apparently where the pilgrims went to heal themselves by drinking the water there. This bridge is called Elgeseter Bru which <laughs> if you translate it directly it means Moose Farm Bridge. <laughs> I just find that funny. Now I'll be healed from all my ailments. This is one of several uh, of these uh, springs that come out all across the region and all across the country, I think. And apparently, they never run dry. So if you were a pilgrim coming to Trondheim, you had to come here and drink. Now we are standing at the Old Town Bridge, where the church where we were is over there now. This bridge was built in 1681. It was designed by uh, the architects of the modern Trondheim uh, after the fire in 1681 that burned down the whole city. So an architect called uh, John Gaspar Cisignon, he was hired uh, from Luxembourg to come and redesign the whole city. So he made the, the streets the way they are today, much wider uh, to prevent fires from spreading all across the town again. Before that the streets were very narrow and old wooden buildings were, were very close together so if one building caught fire the whole city burned down which happened a few times before that. Cisignon also designed uh, a fortress called Christiansten Fortress overlooking the whole city which is located right over there and down here if you look down the river, you can see all the old wooden buildings. So this used to be uh, like a shopping district where people came up with boats and unloaded uh, their goods. Right now, one of the coolest pubs in the city, the Good Neighbor, right down here, has some really cool beers. I think they have like 100 or 200 different beers. And you can uh, enjoy it on the water, on the river, which is pretty nice. And look here people kayaking down the, the river. It's really nice. You can rent some kayaks further up here and take them all the way down to the ocean. And then people come pick up the kayaks for you and you can just go on your merry way. This is a really cool uh, pub called Ante Coriate. They usually have live concerts and stuff. Like right now. Right now we're standing in Stiftskorsparken. And that building over there is Stiftskorn. It is uh, the royal residence whenever the king or queen or the royal family is in the city. Uh, and it is the largest wooden building in uh, the Nordics. Cool. 
And over there we have King Olav the Fifth, King of Norway. Not the current king, but the previous one. Motorcyclists get free parking. That's one of the benefits of driving a motorcycle. Free parking and free tolls. This is the fortress, Christian Sten Fortress, also designed by Sisignon. Uh, he basically designed the whole city in the 1600s. And this building is uh, the commandant's uh, house or home, which now is a restaurant where I used to work a few years ago. This is a very popular place to hold weddings and uh, stuff like that. So from here you can see the whole city, basically. And as you can see, now we have some modern cannons here. These are uh, real cannons, but they're only used for ceremonial purposes. Uh, whenever the king or someone in the royal family has a birthday, they shoot a few salutes. And on uh, like national holidays and stuff, there are uh, salutes shot from here. The fortress today is a museum. Uh, where you can see exhibitions of uh, like the uniforms of the soldiers from the, the 17th, uh, 18th century. And the walls of that building is four meters thick. They uh, were designed to withstand uh, cannonballs hitting them. So down there you can see the church that we just visited. And down there you can see the marina where we uh, also just were. You see the bridge over there? The big white building behind it, that's where Pia works. That is the hospital. So this is the execution spot here at the fortress. Um, during the Second World War, the people fighting against the Nazis who were captured by them, they were executed here. And then after the war, the traitors of Norway were executed here. Behind all of these doors right now is uh, rooms for rent, like for parties and stuff. Kind of strange and in there you have the public toilet right next to the execution spot <laughs> This place is called Utsikten, translated the view. I'm sure you can see why. We thought we would just give you an overview of the city that we were born and grew up in. So out here you can see the island Munkormen, which is an old monastery. And the big building down there is a sports and concert arena. And down there is the pier, the church that we visited earlier. The fortress over there, the Tihol Tower, where I grew up close to, and the hospital that I work at, and the university. We hope you like this little tour of Trondheim. We have one more stop to show you. Let's go. Now we are at our final stop, Sverigesburg. This is today a folk museum where they've taken uh, buildings from all across Norway, taken them down from their original spot and put them up here to show how uh, they were built. It's a very popular place for uh, school kids and kindergartens to, uh, to go and learn about Norwegian history. It's also the site of the oldest stone fortress built in Norway in 1180 or around that time. Uh, in 2016 they found a skeleton in the well in the fortress. 
it's just ruins today but um, that skeleton dated back to when the fortress was overthrown in 1197 by a, a group of people called the Baldurs, I think. I'm not really sure. It's kind of cool history. It was built on the top of the mountain in here with a view over the whole city. It's a good place to have a fortress. Thank you for joining us on our little mini history tour of Trondheim, Norway. If you liked the video, consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribe and click the bell button so you'll be notified when we upload new videos. And by the way, if you want to support us, you could go to buythebean.com and read our blog or get a bag of our very own coffee, The Bean. Thank you for watching. See you next time.